So a lot of you may have seen an article that's been making the rounds from the Daily Mail about trigger warnings in archaeology. And so I'm going to go on a bit of a little ramble for a couple minutes here because I have a lot of thoughts and feelings about it. And I think it's important for somebody, well, a lot of somebody is to address it. Uh, the article, again, from the Daily Mail, and I'll link it below, um, is about how a quote-unquote trigger warning was used at a UCL uh, in a UCL course about archaeologies of modern conflict. And the headline is something like uh, UCL warns archaeology students that bones are scary. And I think that this is a purposeful misrepresentation of what is happening. And I also think it's um, kind of gross that it's being framed this way. It's pretty in vogue right now, depending on where you lie on the like political spectrum, to either love trigger warnings and love using them if you're a bleeding heart liberal or, or whatever, and to just absolutely hate them and to think they're a representation of social justice uh, social justice warrior culture if you sit on the, the conservative end of the spectrum. And that's totally fine. I can understand if you think they're unnecessary and I can understand you not wanting to use them or feeling like you don't want to be forced to use them with your content. But what I don't understand is people who get so upset and so outraged by the idea of somebody else using a trigger warning. To me, it's just a way of um, being polite and considering other people's experiences before you show them something and recognizing that there are people who may be more or less affected by what you're about to talk about based on their own personal um, background or life history. No one is asking other people to use trigger warnings. No one is asking anyone to do that. At you know, at this moment, if you're worried that that's the future, then I think you're worried about something that may never come to pass. So I can understand not wanting to do them yourself, but being outraged that somebody else is taking other people's feelings into consideration, I think is, is just stupid. So I, I don't understand that. And I think that if that's a problem for you, then maybe you should take a long, hard look at why it upsets you and why it bothers you. So the actual article is talking about a class at UCL that's the Archaeology of Modern Conflict. And as far as I can tell, it's a class that talks about how archaeologists have been used um, to excavate human remains and um, you know, artifacts and things from modern war zones. In this class, the teacher just warns students that you know this stuff can be upsetting and that if you want to leave the class, you can. Um, if you feel like you need to leave the class during particularly difficult portions of the material, you can, as long as you catch up on the material. The Daily Mail has characterized it as bones are scary, and that's not what this is about. I think what's important to recognize is that a class about the archaeology of modern conflict is not a normal course. So there's a quote, which I'm just going to pull up right now, from the former government advisor Chris McGovern, chairman of the campaign for real education and he says this is in a sense health and safety going mad again we are back to an overprotective nanny state if you sign up for a course on the archaeology of battlefields or the pro excuse me or the poems of Ovid you should know what you're going to get and that's where I disagree I think a lot of archaeology students um, experience a very similar uh, kind of like course background when you take classes where it's like this stuff is happening very far in the past and it's very easy to divorce yourself from what's happening and it is very unlikely that you're gonna you know encounter something that happened to you or to your family members or anything like that because it's happening very far in the past and again a lot of archaeology doesn't even deal with human remains for example so saying that you know what you're getting you know what you're getting yourself into i think is um kind of a ludicrous statement and again, the archaeology of modern conflict isn't a regular course. It's it, like it's going to delve into things that even some forensic anthropology classes might not deal in, uh, delve into. I think somebody who can't, you know, even fathom that somebody in a class might be particularly disturbed or uniquely disturbed by these images, somebody who can't fathom that person in the course existing, I think must be coming from a very distinct place of privilege. To think that because I don't find this particularly disturbing or upsetting or even triggering in a PTSD sense, to think that since I don't feel that way, I can't imagine a person who might means that you probably came from a place of privilege where you have never had to live in a war zone, you've never been part of any kind of modern conflict or genocide, you've never experienced you know widespread murder 
um, or rape or any of these kind of awful things that a lot of times go hand in hand with armed conflicts. And just because you haven't doesn't mean that there some, isn't someone in your class who might have. UCL points out that there may be people in the class who come from a military background. But I'd also like to say that there are lots of people who study in, you know, Canada, the United States, the UK, all of these Western places who are from families of refugees, recently or not recently, and they've definitely experienced some pretty upsetting things. And furthermore, you have students who have come here on an educational visa, and they are definitely going to have a different life experience than you. So to not understand that those people exist means you're living in a bubble of privilege. Um, a friend of mine talks sometimes about being in undergraduate classes as an Indigenous woman um, in archaeology classes and having professors talk about Indigenous people as if they were this other group of people. Um, and this othering was particularly uncomfortable when they talked about, you know, certain dark histories in, in Canada's past, when things like residential school systems came up. And even though they were talked about in a very respectful way, not warning somebody before that kind of stuff can come up means that you didn't imagine someone in this class would have been particularly affected by the, by these things. And so as an Indigenous woman, I think she thinks it would have been much better for her had she had a bit of a warning beforehand about these things, um, rather than just having it thrust upon her. Because it's very different for me as a, a you know a privileged white woman to hear about um, the Indigenous school system and understand that it's uncomfortable and feel bad about it than having someone stay in the room whose grandmother, you know, experienced really, really awful things in the residential school system. I think that's a very big difference. But I mean, even more than that, even if you do come from a background of privilege, like I do, and I have never experienced a lot of particularly awful things, it still can be hard um, to witness some of the atrocities of modern conflict. A lot of you know that I I went to Somaliland to moonlight as a forensic anthropologist for a short time. And even as someone who's like, I, you know, consider myself a, a scientist and who has dealt with lots of animal remains and lots of um, archaeological human remains, even I was particularly affected by things that I didn't realize. My first, um, you know, my first body, my first victim turned out to be a, a young adolescent man. And I had to leave the room because it was so upsetting to me and I hadn't mentally prepared myself for the fact that some of the victims we would be dealing with might be children. And because this only happened, the conflict that I was working on only happened in the 1980s and because family members were around the site, it was a very personal and intimate experience and it felt very different than you know, a lot of the archaeology that I've worked on. And I had to leave the room and I had to cry. And I had to collect myself and come back in. Do I think I shouldn't have been there? And do I think maybe a warning would have kept me away? No. But I do think having prepared myself a little bit better for something <clears throat> something like that might have made the experience um, different. So I, I don't have a problem with preparing somebody for disturbing content. Because this teacher isn't saying that the students shouldn't or can't or don't have to look at these disturbing images. You know, they're just saying that I understand they may be difficult and you may need more time. And I don't want to penalize you for being particularly affected by something like this. I think the last thing that I kind of want to talk about is that there are some really positive benefits from having these quote unquote trigger warnings attached to um, this material. And it's that, you know, there is a big problem, and I don't know if this is a problem that's, you know, happened for a while or whether or not it's a particularly new crop of undergraduates or whatever it is, but I find there's a big problem with students recognizing that human remains are people. And, you know, you see photos of them in the lab on Instagram where they're holding a skull up next to their head or they're holding them improperly, they're putting their fingers in the eye sockets or they're not holding them carefully and they're dropping the human remains or they're making Hamlet jokes, or all of these things. And I usually have to remind students that these remains used to be people. And even if I don't think that every single fibula is, you know, encompasses all of my being, sometimes the remains we're getting from, um, from different places are coming from different cultures, and you have to be very respectful of how other people see the remains of, of their deceased. 
So by giving a trigger warning at the start of the class to remind students that things may be awful and may be disturbing, I think it really humanizes the, the remains that they're going to see and it really humanizes the conflicts that they're going to talk about. And I think it reminds students that um, these aren't just ideas that we're talking about. These are real conflicts with real people, real individuals who had hopes and dreams and lives and, and family members and loved ones and their lives were cut tragically short. So I don't have a problem at all with trigger warnings if they humanize, you know, the people that we're talking about because archaeologists and forensic anthropologists and everybody else who works on these things, we don't do that stuff because we like skeletons and because science is cool. We do what we do so that we can help the people that we work with. I would argue that we work for these people. You know, our jobs aren't to do science. Our jobs are to help people. And trigger warnings, you know, let students know that what we're doing does in a very tangible way help the families of victims. So, you know, like, all I can say is fuck you to the Daily Mail for trying to reframe something that is meant to be a good thing as part of this like terrifying social justice warrior culture where we like are babying everybody and we're putting the kid gloves on because that's not what it is and screw you for saying that these trigger warnings are a way for students who probably come from less privileged backgrounds to be able to digest and process some really really awful things these aren't just you know skeletons that's not it's not about spooky scary bones this is about really awful things that other humans have done to each other and the trigger warnings are there to help students work through that. And I have zero problem with humanizing these remains. And if you do, well, then maybe you're not in the right line of work. So, you know, no one's asking you to use a trigger warning. But please respect the fact that some anthropologists do.